In this video, we'll learn all about syntactic abstraction, otherwise known as macros. So recall, normal order evaluation uses what's known as lazy evaluation for all sorts of function calls. So if we make a function call with a bunch of sub-expressions, those sub-expressions are only ever evaluated when they're needed. This is what's known again as lazy evaluation. So for example, uh, something we saw on our first assignment or something similar, uh, I can define a function foo that will behave in one of two ways dependent on if we're using normal order evaluation or applicative order. So equals x0 if it's x, sorry, if x is 0 we'll return x, otherwise we'll return y. So a real simple function there. And then we'll pass in foo of, say, times 3, 0 and divide 3, 0. So two expressions here. Um, the first expression should evaluate to 0, and the second expression should give us an error because division by 0. And if we run this, because Scheme uses an applicative order interpreter, um, we get exactly that. It attempts to evaluate the sub-expressions before applying the function foo. Um, and when it gets to the sub-expression divide 3 by 0, the whole thing crashes because we can't do that. So what would happen in normal order if we had this? Well. Um, the sub-expressions aren't evaluated until they're needed, so we pass in times 3, 0 as x, the unevaluated combination of symbols gets uh, bound to x, and similarly for y we have the unevaluated divide 3, 0. Then the if statement, which is a special form, says evaluate just this block here, just the condition, and if it's true, evaluate the consequent, if it's false, evaluate the alternative. So if x does equal 0, we'll return the value of x, which in this case will be 0. Um, and that is the case here. So because times 3, 0 does equal 0, when we go to this condition, we need to figure out does x equal 0, so we finally need the value of x, which means we evaluate times 3, 0 to get the answer 0. 0 does equal 0, so we return x, and we should just get the number 0. Um, the value for y is never needed, so it's never evaluated. We never get the, the division by 0 error. So we can simulate lazy evaluation by using what's known as a thunk. So a thunk is a, it's a lambda that takes in no arguments. It's a bit of a strange name. It's sort of a pejorative on the term think, um, and the fact that we're not going to be doing the thinking for our work just yet. We're going to be wrapping it in a function and delaying that for a little bit later. So the thing about functions, they don't evaluate the, the body of that function until somebody calls that function, until that function is invoked. So if we wrap some sort of function that we don't want to evaluate inside of a function, um, it won't be run until we need it. So in order to evaluate this expression, all we need to then do is evaluate the, the function or invoke that function. But in the meantime, we'll have some sort of object that we can refer to uh, as the promise that will eventually evaluate those symbols. So let's try this out. So we have our, our expression here, uh, but instead of passing in 3, 0, let's wrap this uh, divide 3, 0 by a thunk. So let's say a lambda with no arguments and just like that. So now if we're passing this in as a function, we don't want the, we don't want the function to be returned. Right? We want the value of y. So in order to, uh, to get the value of this lambda, we need to invoke that lambda. Since that lambda has no arguments, that means just applying the function to a list of empty arguments, um, which all boils down to essentially wrapping this y in an extra set of brackets. So the, the lambda here is going to delay this division by zero call, this divide three by zero. So even in applicative order, it says evaluate these two sub-expressions, we get times three zero is zero, and this lambda expression gives us back a function. Right? The body of that function will cause an error if it's ever evaluated, but in the meantime, it's just a function. Okay, so let's run this and see what happens. We run our code, and the code doesn't crash, we get zero. So uh, 3 times 0 gets evaluated to 0 eagerly using applicative order. So 0 gets passed into x. x does equal 0, so that's true. We return the value of x. This y never is needed, so the, uh, the extra application step here, the unwrapping of that thunk, uh, never actually occurs. So it gets passed into y is just this lambda. Right? We can see what that value would be if we copy and paste it down here. It's just a procedure object. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so because it's never needed, it never gets applied, the body of that lambda never gets executed, and the code never crashes. So by, by using a thunk, by wrapping our, our expressions inside of these uh, argumentless functions, we, we can create, or simulate rather, uh, a lazy evaluation even in our eager evaluation language. So uh, it might, might uh, strike you to think, well if we can create lazy evaluation in our eager language, could we just create a function that does that for us? 
right, that just wraps other uh, expressions in some lambda or in some thunk and returns that thunk for us. So let's try that out. Let's try creating uh, the delay and force expressions. So define delay. Now, a word of caution, the terms delay and force are already built in. So if you're not using the custom R5RS, which actually appears I'm not on this machine, um, go to languages, show details, and make sure this box is unchecked. Disallow redefinition of initial bindings. We want to allow the redefinition of initial bindings. Um, right, so I'm going to redefine what it means to delay using this new thunk procedure. So if we have some expression that we don't want to evaluate, then all we need to do is wrap that in the lambda. So we'll say lambda with no arguments and then the expression. Okay, so the body of that thunk is to evaluate whatever expression was passed in. Okay. Uh, and then the analogous definition for force. Uh, this is the idea that uh, it's sort of the opposite. Once we have that delayed expression, we want to undelay it or activate it. So if that delayed expression is just a lambda, um, say delayed expression, then what we need to do is unwrap or evoke that delayed expression. So exp in brackets. So delayed exp inside brackets takes this lambda and executes it, which should get us back to the original expression. So. We have some expression, we want to delay it, we wrap it in a lambda. Later on, when we want to get that value back, we unwrap it just using function application. So let's try this out. So instead of lambda and executing here, let's use the more generic terms delay, so delay some expression, same brackets, and force. Okay. So if we're delaying 3 divided by 0, uh, the thing that comes out of this delay function should be a thunk. Uh, that's what we're going to pass into y, just like we did before. We're passing the procedure object. Um, and then we're going to force that thunk, and that just means essentially unwrapping it. So all we've done in this step is just used a more generic pattern. Uh, we've given labels delay and force to the, the wrapping and unwrapping of thunks that we did manually in the previous example. So let's try this out. So let's run our code. Uh, let's actually do this in the right order here. There we go. Now delay and force exist by the time we go to use them. Uh, run our code, and our code crashes. So we get division by zero. Now, why would that be? The whole point was that we wanted to wrap this thing in a thunk, and that's exactly what we did, right? We took the expression, and we said, put it inside a lambda. But you might notice the error actually occurs on this line. We don't even get into the body of delay. The reason being, we still have applicative order. So when we call delay, which is just a usual function, we need to evaluate its sub-expressions. So we pass in divide 3, 0, uh, but before we can pass in those symbols, they need to be evaluated. So we end up trying to divide by 0, and it crashes. So we run into the same issue we had at the beginning of all of this. That is to say, applicative order is eagerly evaluating things, um, and we don't want it to. We want it to just take these symbols into the delay function so that we can wrap them. So it's kind of uh, it's already the, the same issue. So the, the, the real problem here is that we have just normal functions, and normal functions are always evaluated eagerly. But we've seen uh, special forms aren't always evaluated using that eval apply or that um, applicative order reasoning. So a special form, um, they look a lot like function calls. So it's an S expression structure, it has some arguments to it, but the arguments are not going to be evaluated using applicative order. So if we can create our own special forms, then we might be able to implement delay and force for ourselves. Okay. So we've seen a few different special forms already, so let's just recap a couple of them here. So Special forms have their own special rules of evaluation. They don't use applicative order. They don't say evaluate all of the sub-expressions and then apply. They might evaluate some of the sub-expressions or none of the sub-expressions and then do some sort of work on those. So for example, a lambda. A lambda is a special form because the body of that lambda is not evaluated until it's called. So it just constructs a procedure um, with that expression um, sort of waiting to be evaluated. We've seen cond and if are both special forms, right? It says evaluate the condition until we find a true condition, in the case of a cond. Um, when that condition is true, then we'll evaluate the, the related consequent. But we won't evaluate all of the different expressions, just the one on the branch that's, that's active, as I've been calling it. Okay. We've seen the define special form. So define something like, uh, let's just use a, a variable defines that seem simpler to see. So define x to be 1, for example. This has to be a special form because x doesn't exist. So if we tried to evaluate the sub-expressions before applying, uh, we'd run into a similar error where that thing doesn't exist, so we can't actually evaluate the symbol x yet. 
Uh, we've also seen quote, quotes a special form that says, don't evaluate these symbols, just take them as symbols. So it's a pretty useful special form there as well. It says, don't evaluate them using the regular applicative order. Okay, so if we want to make our own special forms, uh, we're gonna have to use some syntactic abstraction. So syntactic abstraction means altering the syntax of the language itself to make it a bit more manageable. So in the same way that we abstract uh, procedures behind some sort of uh, defined statement or we abstract values into variables, uh, with syntactic abstraction we're, we're changing the syntax of the language itself. So for our purposes this means making a macro to transform the text of our code in some sort of preprocessor stage. So macros cause the transformation of one expression into another expression without evaluating it. So that transformation happens before the evaluator runs through the entire code. So it does a sort of pre-processing find and replace. We'll give it a pattern to look for and a pattern to replace it with, uh, and it'll do all of those changes without actually, um, without actually doing any evaluation steps. It won't follow applicative order. So we can use macros to make special forms. That is to say, we can take in the uh, the, the input pattern would be something like the, the S expression that we normally see in these special forms, something like this, or something like delay expression. And the output pattern would be the, essentially the body of what our function would be. But the difference is we wouldn't have that applicative order step that has to take in the arguments, turn them into parameters, and then run through the body of the expression. Instead, it'll just essentially take this and replace it with the, uh, the related output in line. So let's see how to do that. Let's scroll to our notes here. So there's a bunch of different ways you can mess with the syntax in Scheme, but we're going to learn one of them called Define Syntax. Uh, special forms, there's Define Syntax. So here's the, the syntax for defining syntax. So it's a special form called Define Syntax. And then the new keyword here is whatever you're trying to define. So in our case, that would be the new keyword for delay or for force if we're making a delay special form or a force special form. Okay. Now there's a few different ways that you can um, fill in the body of syntax rules here. So define syntax is a, it's a sort of general purpose thing that lets us define a macro with a name. The simplest way to do that is using syntax rules. There is other ones that we won't cover in this course. Um, so syntax rules is essentially a sequence of pattern template pairs. I'll talk about this other needed keywords in just a second. So syntax rules, the body of that is a bunch of pattern template pairs, kind of like how a cond is structured. So we have parentheses around each pair, um, where in cond it's a, a condition and an action. In defined syntax, it's sort of an input and an output. So pattern here is the input syntax. It's the sort of stuff that we'll type into our code, something like delay divide three zero. We can put variables in there as we'll see. And template here is the output. So it'll match those variables to the template variables in the output. Uh, in this case, it'd be something like uh, lambda expression. So it's going to look for whatever pattern we put here and replace it with whatever pattern we put here, with whatever template we put there, sorry. So these patterns can include variables, as I mentioned, and they will be matched into the similar patterns, or sorry, the same patterns inside the template. So if we have uh, divide three zero, that can be put into a variable in this pattern and copied into the template using this system. Now, as I mentioned, the other needed keywords, uh, this is usually left blank, so it's just an, a set of empty parentheses, syntax rules, and then two parentheses. Um, but it's useful if you want, for example, to specify some auxiliary keywords that you don't want to be considered variables. So an example of this you might be familiar with is if you were defining a cond special form, um, the else keyword is a keyword that only exists inside the else, um, doesn't have any meaning outside of a cond. Um, but you don't want it to be a variable. You don't want that to suddenly be something that can be replaced by some expression or something. It has to be that keyword or nothing. So um, if you are creating something like maybe a for each loop, you want to have for x in list, you could have for as your new keyword, and then in would be in the auxiliary keywords here. OK, so let's see how we can create the special forms delay and force in our code using this define syntax. Um, so it's going to work very similar to our thunk example. So we're going to take in some sort of expression. So we're going to say delay some expression. Uh, and that's going to happen very similar to this. That expression is just going to be lapped, wrapped sorry, in a lambda. Um, and then later on, we'll say force that delayed expression. And that will just unwrap the, the lambda that we've created. Um, but instead of passing that through a function where applicative order kicks in, we're going to use defined syntax so that transformation can happen without any evaluation. So let's try that out. 
So I say define syntax. And then in this case, we're going to create the delay special form. And then we're going to use some syntax rules to do that. We have no extra keywords, so that's just going to be left blank. And then we just need a bunch of pattern template pairs. In this case, we're just going to have one pattern, one template. So um, the first pattern will look like delay and then some expression. So that's very similar to this here. Okay. Um, and then to replace that, we want that to essentially be the body of what our delay was before. So we'll say lambda, lambda, no arguments on that expression. Okay. So delay here is going to be um, the, the new keyword. And this actually oftentimes, if you're looking at the, the literature, this can just be left blank. Some people will write their syntax rules like this. Um, so this has to match the, the keyword delay, but it has to match so consistently that Scheme actually will pretty much ignore what you put here and just put delay in there. So a lot of people will write it that way. I find that very confusing. So delay is much simpler. You can clearly see what the pattern you're looking for is and the template that it'll be replaced by. So this variable exp, because it's not mentioned in uh, either the top part here or in the auxiliary keywords, this is just going to be treated as a variable. So anything that we put there in the actual code will be put into this variable and then translated into the, the output template here. So this will be lambda divide 3, 0, for example. Now all of that will happen before the evaluation occurs. Let's actually get rid of these so we don't confuse anything. I'm just going to put a note here, error, because applicative order. Okay. Now, um, we have all that in there. So let's test this out. We have delay. Let's create force as well. Now, technically, force doesn't need to be a special form here. Once we have a procedure, um, it's not going to evaluate that lambda until we actually evoke that lambda. So uh, it doesn't need to be a special form. We're not running against applicative order here. But just to follow the pattern, let's make them both special forms. So Define syntax force, then syntax rules, no auxiliary keywords. Our input will be force some expression or some delayed expression, and then the body will just be that expression. So replace this with just an application of the procedure itself, and that should be our force. So again, it's very much like what we had here as the body of our function, just without having the, the function mechanics getting in the way. All right. So let's test this out, or actually, sorry, let's, uh, let's first move all of our definitions before they're being used again. Um, otherwise, it'll end up using the built-in ones, and that won't be very informative. Um, so we define delay, we define force, then we use delay and force. Let's test that out. Run our code, and it all works fine. It doesn't crash. So before, when we didn't have this, when we we're using our delay uh, and force as functions, uh, the applicative order said evaluate divide 3 by 0 before passing that into delay, and that was crashing. Uh, but now, because this is a special form, this expression here, effectively, what uh, the preprocessor does is it says cut and replace this with lambda uh, divide 3 by 0. Right? It does this sort of preprocess right in the front, um, and we've seen before that that works by essentially delaying the application by wrapping it inside this thunk. So let's put that back to where it was. Okay. Uh, let's run our code again. So that still works. Uh, and let's just test one other thing. Let's make this something that isn't zero. We'll make this condition false, and then it'll have to force y. So if we run our code now, now it crashes. Um, it says the error is here. Uh, it's just because that's the only place where divide 3 by 0 actually occurs. The error is actually happening in this place here. So it says delay all of this. So it gets into our code. This becomes false. And then at that point, it says force the value of y. So figure out what this divide 3 by 0 actually is. And then the whole thing crashes. So the, the value is only used once it's needed. So we've effectively created a lazy evaluation inside of an applicative order evaluated language. All right, and that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll start using this to create um, a sort of data structure, much like lists, but that's a bit more efficient, known as streams.